Hi everyone, it is November 13, 2018. 2018. Um, I want to pass along this video, Dutch Sense, what he discovered, these um, what seem to be heat flashes in Idaho. He posted this video 14 hours ago. No, he doesn't, I don't, say what the consequences of what he saw are. But considering the fires and the anomalies that have been caught before the fires, I thought that it was worthy to post. I will let you watch just a few minutes. And it, whoa, it looked like something flashed off there. You see that? Look at this right here. Something far north flashes off really quick with a bright heat signature and then it's just goes away. Huh. All right. Well, That's looks like that one might be a little bit almost done. Almost done. Oh, wait. Look down here to the south, down in Mexico. Huge fire just broke out along the coast. And it went away just as quick as it broke out. Huh. I start to wonder, because we're getting thermal signatures, are we seeing something else go on that we're not supposed to see? I can tell you this, Idaho was lit up on thermal signature two nights ago, making no sense whatsoever because it, there's no fires there at all. And three quarters of Idaho showed heat signature across the mountain peaks. That's not my take on it. That's what we all saw. So is it possible that there's heat signatures showing up across these areas that shouldn't? Yes, it certainly is possible. But what does it mean? Oh, wait. Look, here it is. You can see it. Holy crap. Look. Look. Oh, my God. You can see it. Look at this. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to have to. Dang it. Is there any way for me to. Ah, there is. How far can I zoom it in? That's the closest I can zoom it in. See all these red signatures here? Here, 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 here. Yeah, I don't know if you'll have to brighten it. You might have to look at an angle. I'm looking at an angle at my screen, and I can see it better than looking at the screen directly. I'm serious. But it's at least four direct hot spots. Look at this. You can even see them in dream daytime. And there's no smoke coming from them, so they're not fires. Or is there... There are, there are, is there a little smoke? There is a little bitty, bitty, bitty. Maybe that's cloud, I, it's hard to tell. But last I checked, there's no major huge wildfires across all of Idaho at once. And may that remain the same, that there are no huge wildfires in Idaho. I want you to listen to David Keith Mr. Geoengineer, Mr. Harvard University professor, geoengineer, talk about the dumping of sulfur or alumina into the atmosphere. He says in this video, and I just want to play a few little clips from two videos, but he says that the environmental impacts, um, well, they haven't been studied yet. So if I could just clarify, so 10 megatons of aluminum dumped into the, the uh, atmosphere would have no human health impacts. So, so let me be more careful here. Yeah. We're to separate out the toxicological, but so the alumina, we've only begun to research and publish nothing. We haven't done anything serious on alumina, and so there could be something terrible that we'll find tomorrow we haven't looked at. Aerosol geoengineering looks like it is so cheap that the cost is basically not going to be an issue. That means that implementation decisions will be risk-to-risk -risk decisions. The risk of doing it against the risk of not doing it. And it makes the problem of how we govern it fundamentally harder and different and novel. Um, another reason why I think more knowledge is good is I think this will turn out to be more complicated and harder to do than we now think. 
So I've told you that it's cheap to deliver materials to the stratosphere, and I'm convinced that's true. I don't think that will change. But I think the more we do research, the less easy this will look, the more complicated the environmental effects will look. And that's a good thing, because right now it looks too easy. So I think that if we do more research, we're likely to find out that it's harder and more complicated than we thought, and that the side effects are harder to manage. And that's a healthy outcome that will make it easier to do the management. It's an empirical question how people will actually react to knowledge about this. Another reaction is to say, if these crazy scientists are so concerned about putting CO2 in the atmosphere, they want to think about these things, then that might actually mean we should be more serious about the risks of CO2 in the atmosphere. And by the way, it's not really a moral hazard. It's more like free riding on our grandkids. And by the way, it's not really a moral hazard. It's more like free riding on our grandkids. Wow. Okay. So free riding on our grandkids. Hmm. What a loving guy that is. Side effects will become very hard to manage, and that's a good thing. Everything's a good thing that's really a bad thing for David Keith. The moral hazard, free riding on our grandkids. So this geoengineering has been going on for decades, only accelerating in frequency. Uh, they have been intensifying the geoengineering project all over the world, dumping more and more aluminum, uh, uh, barium, strontium, lithium. When you see all of that pink all over your sky, what he is saying there is the effects won't be so bad on, well, my generation, but in a few more generations, the effect could be really bad. Free riding on our grandkids. Listen to what he has to say at this geoengineering conference. Yeah. Why are people dying? Can I leap in? This is a really important moral point. So if I made a decision, or if there was a collective decision to do a geoengineering program, and you put, say, uh, the kind of program I think makes more sense to put about a million tons a year in, but let's say, you might end up killing many tens of thousands of people a year as a direct. They are talking about sulfur. Million tons of sulfur. Killing many tens of thousands of people a year as a direct result of that decision. I think that has moral consequences. I don't sweep under the rug. So this is a case where I take this much differently from Alan and think it's a much more serious issue. Now, it's true that as part of doing that, you would hope that the overall benefits of human mortality would be so that you would save many, many more people than that. But the fact that you uh, would save more people than you kill doesn't mean there's no moral impact of making a decision that directly kills people. And I think that we who talk about this have a duty to be clear-eyed about the, the direct risks involved in doing it. So this was um, part of a conference, and they were getting questions from the audience. And some of those questions were related to the uh, consequences to our health. So it could kill a whole lot of people, this geoengineering that is being conducted, has been going on for decades, only accelerating. Why do we have so many people who are sick and dying from a whole lot of diseases, struggling with chronic physical pain and, well, the dumping of chemicals. I will link below to <clears throat> this site, but I just came over here and I was checking out the geoengineering, which is what you see right here. All of this is manufactured cloud, the dumping of chemicals, heavy metals, into the atmosphere, and they can spread them out using frequencies, microwaves, and extremely low frequencies. But it is remarkable how poisoned we are every day. So do you see all of these lines right here?
That is the geoengineering. The geoengineering is this solid mass of cloud substance that has been manufactured by man. But do you see this straight line of rippled cloud right well it's uh, really northeast Texas. These are microwaves going through this cloud. The microwaves are dangerous to our health. The geoengineering is dangerous. It's all very dangerous. You see the ripples if you look closely, um, you will see the ripples very clearly right down here. But all of the uh, geoengineering that is taking place on the periphery of this cloud mass of manufactured substance, artificial cloud, all of these lines, all of these lines, you can see the microwaves right here. And this is um, New Mexico. New Mexico got quite a bit of snow. It, look, it's in our face. They're hiding nothing now. Um, but as you can see, the thick cloud remains stationary in the atmosphere. The thin cloud layer you'll see move over the stationary portion. You see it moving? Right over here. And it's moving with those microwaves. Right there. And it's like filling out. But all of these microwaves that you see, all of life right in this area is being saturated with dangerous microwave radiation. All of the people in Northeast Texas, South Texas, are being microwaved. All of the rain that we have been experiencing in um, South Carolina, as well as North Carolina. Let me see if I can um, bring this back. It's hard to get a, a good size picture of what is taking place. But um, I can't bring it out that way, so let me. Mm. Can I get the full map? No, let me see. Okay, let's do it this way. You go to localized sectors. South Carolina. Now, somebody left a comment saying, that they saw on one of these sites, South Carolina getting really hit with a lot of frequencies. When they have that thick, thick cloud substance, horizon to horizon, covering your sky, they need frequencies to maintain that coverage. So all of South Carolina is covered in thick frequencies. But look at a thick cloud. But look at all of the frequencies. You can see that these microwaves are at play. This is very dangerous. You can see the microwaves right down here. Now, what you see with your I, just looking at the sky, and you see all of the ripples, you can also see it on the satellites. So do meteorologists see it. Look at all of these microwaves going into Georgia. 
we are being so pummeled with dangerous toxins along with the microwave radiation look at all of the microwaves right over here you can see all of the ripples um, it is amazing to me that life itself is still hanging on but when you think about all of the trees and you think about all of the insects and the birds and you know dropping out of the sky and uh, 70 percent of insects are gone in the world 70 percent and then you face so many people who really are just wowed by the technology and and really don't care about the consequences. Look at all of these microwaves um, at play, right? North Georgia, in upstate Carolina, all through North Carolina. Uh, let's go back and um, where is the localized sectors? Okay, let's go to Idaho pummeled. Uh, it's really, I can't get to that scrolling thing, but look at all of these aerosols laid out in our atmosphere. Every which way, crossing one another. This is not Mother Nature. This is our fabulous geoengineering scientists like David Keith destroying our atmosphere creating side effects that are I believe now just out of control look at this the uh, H here that's it's not mother nature doing this look at these perfect lines the lines throughout here. Now, are they getting ready? Are they getting ready to create wildfires in Idaho? Considering what Dutch Sins spotted, those heat signatures, considering that so many of you have left me comments underneath my video about the California fires and how much you were sprayed right before this fire started. Well, Idaho, you are getting, you are getting really drenched with toxic poisons that are incendiary. Along with Oregon. Um, Well, let's, let's check out Southern California. And here we go. And this is today, by the way. You can see all of the spring right over here into Nevada. You're doused in toxic chemicals. Let's just do one more. Um, where shall I go? Uh, Northern California. All of the microwaves used here in Nevada and Look at all of the spraying taking place. All of these toxic chemicals and aerosols. Northern California, incendiary substances while you have these fires taking place. If you look closely, you can see all of the lines, all of the grid patterns taking place in your atmosphere. No doubt you can see it happening with your naked eye when you walk outside.
Well, I thought I would check this site as well. <laughs> Unbelievable. Look at these frequencies and look at the pulse. This laser beam, this um, extremely low frequency being set off. Not sure what it is, but something is triggering right here, right where your fires are. Boom. Hit, hit, and something is happening right here. It explodes. With what looks like precipitation, but I don't think you have precipitation going in California right now. And it looks like something also is taking place in Central California with what looks like precipitation exploding and going away. Um, you've got the extremely low frequencies, Southern California. I don't know why. Um, there's an awful lot of people who talk about the fracking, um, these vol uh, volcanoes. These extremely low frequencies can cause earthquakes. So we've had these swarms of earthquakes and I have shown you the frequencies that are set off all over, right where these earthquakes are, like Oklahoma. And Oklahoma, well, at night, Oklahoma, you sure do have an awful lot of frequencies, extremely low frequencies being set off. Uh, northern Oklahoma, right up here, which is, I can't remember the name, but they were having a swarm of earthquakes. You also have these beams, frequencies, right here, set off. Just look, uh, it's obvious that we are experiencing a war. And the use of the frequencies, brilliant weapon, because it's invisible but made visible very often on these sites. So with these frequencies, they can do an awful lot of damage. They don't only create, manipulate, modify weather fronts as they are uh, pretty much all the time now. So, got an awful lot of weather taking place in Maine with the frequency still shooting out from the Portland area. And earlier, though I deleted that video, I showed you the thousands of miles of uh, weather occurring with an awful lot of frequencies uh, being set off. Burlington, Vermont, Quebec, all around Canada. But Canada, you are, it's like 24 seven, you guys are pummeled. Let's just take check in telecast. No, you have no precipitation, of course, because they are stopping it from entering California because they want you to burn up. Um, Nothing. No precipitation whatsoever. So when we see on other sites th th this explosion of precipitation, then, you know, yeah, sometimes you can see on satellites or radar, it looks like precipitation, but nothing is happening in that area. Nothing. So I showed all of the frequencies. You can still see them. Um, yeah, I, I'm, it's hard to do this all the time, but the extremely low frequencies are the defined, faded, fanned out lines that you can see right here very clearly. Frequencies going through 
every weather front now, every weather front. You can see it in the snow, you can see it in rain. Um, they're not hiding anything. They know that the American people on the whole are just too lost and gone. They don't have to hide anything. Uh, the meteorologists they got, they, they, don't, they know that they're just going to lie and lie and lie. Look at all the microwaves going through this. And you have my, you've got meteorologists not saying a friggin' thing when they see these sites. They see the microwaves. They see the right angled um, weather that is clearly not Mother Nature, but those right angles are brought about by those frequencies that can cut precisely um, precipitation. No, they're not going to say anything. So, when you have a lot of liars on your team, wow, you can really be quite a success at any kind of agenda that you want to pursue. And we do have a lot of liars in this country. They have no problem lying. So, yeah. Look at the extremely low frequencies coming out of the Halifax area. I don't know how you guys are still walking in Canada because you are hit hard with these extremely low frequencies. Now it looks a little bit um, less, but that's because the precipitation is a little less. So you can't see them as defined as I showed them in the video that I deleted because of those cars on the beach. Um, but look at everywhere, everywhere in Canada, whenever you have weather, you see intense, extremely low frequencies being set off. It's a given. During the day, at night, it doesn't matter. You have, you have them shooting off all over. So when they know that a population has been so degraded, so demoralized, and so dumbed down, when they have that majority, they can do anything, put it in your face, it doesn't matter. Because they know no one is going to stop them. Because they're not in a condition to stop them. But earlier I showed this square. <laughs> there was a square in your snow, Canada. A square. Well, we know that that is not Mother Nature. None of these signatures, the frayed or the uh, what is referred to as a sawtooth uh, signature, the frayed edges, the right angles, the faded out, fanned out lines, the extremely low frequencies, all of it manipulated by man. So how are you guys feeling? Any of you not Feeling very well? South Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina, Houston, Texas, Northeast Texas. No, oh, anywhere, anywhere. I will link below to everything, especially this site on uh, Global Skywatch. This, these are the symptoms of all of the toxic chemicals and the heavy metals and no doubt biologicals that they are spraying in our atmosphere that we are breathing. But when you look at all of the unexplained deaths of animals and, and birds and plant life and trees, well, the geoengineering as well as this Wi-Fi environment that we have created. Did you know that chemtrails contain mercury? Read more. A comprehensive list of mercury symptoms. How mercury affects your emotions and changes your personality. But we also have aluminum. Oh, wow. And we also have an explosion of dementia. And now dementia, well, when people got to that old age, some people came down with dementia. Now, doesn't matter what age. Early onset dementia. And nobody is questioning this. 
aneurysms, strokes, heart attacks, cancer, fatigue, headaches, sinus pain, muscle pain, joint pain, um, asthma, I'm not going to read all of them, heart fib fibrillations, heart attacks, shortness of breath, loss of balance, dark circles under the eyes, stomach pain, nausea, frequent illness, uh, the non-flu, flu, you feel like you have the flu, it comes on suddenly, it leaves suddenly, it might last for a day or two days, it so knocks you out, it feels like you have a temperature, all of it, all of it is induced by microwave frequencies, and many people think that they have the flu, when they don't, they run off to a doctor, that doctor may even give them a flu shot when they have the flu. They think they have the flu. Um, inability to focus or concentrate. Anxiety, anger issues, tooth decay, insomnia, hyperactivity, panic attacks, uh, bronchitis, asthma, nosebleeds, skin rashes, Morgellons disease, ringing in the ears, changes in eyesight, near or far sightedness, upper respiratory infections. Elevated blood pressure. Well, I experience many of those symptoms. When I listen to neighbors, they experience many of these symptoms. When I read your comments, many of you experience these symptoms. And it is no surprise. Unfortunately, there's going to be an awful lot of people who get sicker not better. But look at all of this chemtrailing. Look at all of this mass of poisons and toxins and chemicals and heavy metals into the atmosphere, altering our atmosphere and making life sick. Not just the human being, but all life. And if you look closely, you can see all of the microwaves at play on the periphery of this massive cloud. Can they take lasers and shoot it into this cloud to create rain? Yes, they can. Can they take our radar stations and shoot up high frequencies into the ionosphere? They bounce back and they shoot off extremely low frequencies coming from transmitter sites or Gwen Towers and create flash flooding. Yes, they can. Can they create earthquakes? Yes. But Mother Nature, look at how much of this cloud substance remains stationary as the chemtrailing is moved over it. Look at this. It doesn't move, but this whole layer of spraying moves right below it. Even if we didn't get sick from the chemicals, the heavy metals, and the microwave frequencies, the altering of the atmosphere, everything has a ripple effect. You alter the natural processes of Earth, we are all going to experience those adverse consequences of playing around with those natural processes. But when you look at all of the poisons that we are so assaulted with on a daily basis, yeah, I am surprised there is still life on this planet. I'm not surprised that a whole lot of life now is really struggling to stay alive.